everyone, my name is Autumn and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't worry, I am too. Today I wanted to touch on a topic that really would have helped me at the beginning of my minimalism journey. Like, how do you know what to buy or do you buy nothing at all? Well, you can, there's just a little bit more to it. I started with minimalism when I moved into this apartment about four and a half years ago and I'm by no means perfect, but you know, I tried my best. I came from an upbringing with lots and lots of stuff. One of the ways that I used to clean my room clean my room growing up was to just shove everything under the bed and, you know, make sure that nothing was poking out from underneath the blanket. Uh, you know, cleaning and organizing was just not something I was used to. So when I moved here, I wanted to make things uh, just different than what I was used to. I was basically starting over, so I didn't really have much furniture or anything like that. And it was the first time that I was like truly living on my own. I loved the way that it looked and felt when it was completely clear. And so I've been trying ever since to keep it that way. And obviously it hasn't gone that way, but you know, it's a journey. For those unfamiliar with minimalism, I like to think of it more as a mindset or a philosophy rather than an aesthetic lifestyle. Many people believe that it's something where you own as little as possible, when in reality, I think it's more about everything having a purpose or a place. It's a conscious way of living, so being intentional about what you buy and what you bring into your space. Your home doesn't have to look a certain way, and it doesn't have to be something that happens overnight. I've been doing this for over four years and my place still doesn't look like those gorgeous, neat and tidy Pinterest homes. And I think it's just because I don't have a lot of space to work with. So every room is multi-purpose, which automatically makes it a lot messier. I also prefer to budget my money into other things at the moment rather than organizational equipment. Though as time goes, I would love to pull this place together a lot more. And now that the intro is out of the way, let's just get into the process of how I buy a new or used item for my minimalist apartment. There are seven questions that I ask myself, and the first one is, is it practical? If I can see myself in the future not using this item, then maybe it's not worth buying at that moment. I want to make sure that everything has a purpose and a use. I ask myself this because sometimes it's really easy to think that you need something, but when you look a little deeper, um, you realize it's actually more about how the item made you feel rather than its practicality. You want to make sure items add benefit or value to your life. The second question that I ask myself is how much space does this item take up? One thing that I love is my space and if I start to feel a little overcrowded I know something needs to change. Having a couch that takes up half the living room or a chair that takes up an entire corner of my apartment just doesn't sit right with me. I also want to make sure that I am able to walk through my apartment freely. I have a baby also, so I have to make sure that every inch counts when I consider bringing things into my space. The third question is, is it heavy? And I know some of you are thinking like, what do you mean, is it heavy? Like, how does that make any sense? Well, it's part of its practicality. If something is far too heavy to be carrying up the stairs to my apartment, I'm not sure I want to be dealing with that. And if I move, I'm going to have to carry it back down, put it in a truck, and then take it back out and bring it to the new place. I know that elevators can help, but my apartment doesn't have one, and sometimes it can be really tricky to fit items into one. I much prefer items that are lightweight that I can carry with just one or two hands, and if something is collapsible, that's even better. The fourth question that I ask myself is, does this item have more than one purpose? Sometimes we get items for one purpose, which can be great, but if you outgrow that item, then it no longer serves any purpose and can just be cast to the side, especially if you're not used to decluttering things. It could just end up sitting in piles or never being used by anyone else. Something I really enjoy about a item having more than one purpose is when it finishes that one life, it can go on to another new life serving another purpose. A great example of this is a basket. Baskets serve so many purposes. Maybe what you were using it for at first no longer works for you, so then you end up using it for something else. Another example is a couch with storage underneath. You can relax on it, and you can store away things like pillows, blankets, games, anything like that. It helps with decluttering and also opens up your space all around. 
Next up is, do I only want this because it feels good? A lot of the times I catch myself in this hyper consumer state where I see an advertisement or I see someone with something nice that I end up really wanting for myself. I ask myself this question because I need to pull myself back into reality a little bit sometimes. I know that buying that item would just be filling the void of the wanting of the item and I know later on I would just be kicking myself for buying it. I end up spending way more than I wanted to or realize that I never needed it in the first place. When approaching this question, I keep in mind that it's different than, it's different if it's for like self-care. Sometimes after a long day, you just wanna buy a fancy latte and enjoy it. I do it within reason and it feels fantastic without feeling like I overspent or that the thing will go to waste. So this next one I find is quite overlooked. My partner is actually the one who got me into this and he started by asking me, is there something that is already here that can serve the purpose? I think of a lot of us buy on autopilot and we forget to stop and think to ourselves, hey, is there something that I already have that I can use? And a lot of the time I find that we just go and purchase it as soon as a problem arises or a need or want arises. And I know that I'm even guilty of this. So for example, if I am organizing my closet and I need a basket for something, I'll see if there's an empty one lying around. If there isn't, I will see if there is one that can be repurposed for my closet instead. I find a lot of the time that there is baskets that really don't need to be used for things like two pens or something. And I may end up even just using a box. It's really not that aesthetic, but I've kind of learned to just be okay with that. And you know, like let's say if the urge is like really there, um, I will go to a thrift store and see if I can find one there. This leads me to my next question, which is, can I buy it used or can I buy it from an eco-friendly company? I really try to get into the habit of buying secondhand instead of buying new. I use a lot of different ways to buy secondhand, like Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, eBay, or anything like that. Uh, it really depends on just what the item is. And the thrift store is also another great place to shop. I'm sure many of us are very aware that the world is just full of trash and I feel like a lot of the times people just toss things out that are perfectly good when they could just like go to another home and I think if people just stop throwing perfectly good items out and decided to thrift them instead and if people continue to buy thrifted items then we could avoid the amount of trash that we create. There are places like Certified B Corporations, which are businesses that are recognized for their transparency, their environmental impact, and their legal accountability. These types of businesses can range from food to clothing and even different banks. One of my absolute favorite B Corp brands are, is one called Cotton. It's a clothing brand and they use Egyptian cotton and they're just absolutely fantastic. I cannot rave about them enough. I am actually currently wearing their shirt. Uh, I wear them pretty much every single day. I will always try and choose B Corps over other types of businesses just for the reasons that uh, they are recognized. Something that I found was really cool that um, Cotton does is when they send their packages out, even their ink is made from things like algae. A lot of companies underpay their staff, they don't have good company values, they make really cheap clothing, and there's just like so many other things that are not great about companies that don't hold high standards. So before buying next time, see if there is a B Corporation that you can buy from instead. And if not, then at least take a look at where your clothes or whatever the item is, is coming from and what their company practices are. When you buy something, it's easier to justify why you bought it after because you already have it. You end up saying, oh, like, I, yeah, I really needed this. Then a few months later, it becomes an item that is just like taking up way too much space whether it be physical or mental. I find that when my life starts to fill up with things, that mentally it's harder for me to actually do stuff. I feel unhappy, overstimulated, and like too much is going on at once. It makes it hard for me to work or deal with things calmly and rationally like I normally do. Let me know what you thought of today's video in a comment below. I'm always happy to hear from you. My parting question for you today is, is there anything that you ask yourself before you buy items? Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.